Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the Prophetic Insight. Um, I've got some more uh, interesting things. Uh, this is a recent, uh, another recent dream that Pastor Dana Coverstone had. Uh, another warning dream, but this one is about uh, November. So there's some interesting things. Uh, on November so uh, I thought you would be interested in it um, I had to edit out um, some of it out due to uh, graphics and um, being taken down and all this stuff but there is a uh, full version of it that he explains of more stuff in detail on there uh, which um, probably would be flagged and taken down um, but anyways um, you get the picture of, of um, some of the stuff that he's saying, but uh, also keep in mind that um, that dreams uh, dreams also could be. I, I think of it is if especially if it's a warning dream, it's something to pray for uh, to change. Uh, um, I always look at it as whenever things bad happen, you always want to flip it prophetically meaning to pray for the good of it or change the uh, uh, things to happen usually when you have uh, warning dreams you should always pray against it and uh, God's mercy on there on the hand that's why a lot of things kind of switch you know um I look at I look at uh the scripture where it says about King Hezekiah <clears throat> and those of you may not know that story Bible story on there where um, the prophet came to King Hezekiah and said that uh, the Lord uh, want me to tell you that, you know, um, you're going to die and your time's short. It's it's that time. Well, Hezekiah, what he did was he prayed and uh, he, it says that he um, put his face against the wall and uh, he cried out to God for mercy and um, the God to um, spare him. And uh, have mercy on him and so results of that um, the prophet came back and said God heard you and that he gives him more time same thing happened with um, um, can't think of that city uh, Nineveh yeah Nineveh from um, Jonah you know as you know that Jonah was the messenger the prophet to go and and tell him that god's going to destroy it and uh kind of a um that was his message you know and if they don't repent and so as you, as you know the story they repented they turned around and god spared it but um a lot of people don't know about this part that later on it was destroyed and so Sometimes um, God will prolong things, but then um, kind of hold back, you know, then finally, you know, it's time, you know. So with Hezekiah, he did die, but God gave him more, more years to live on there. So basically he had mercy and extended it, but uh, the ending result had happened. So um, I don't know. I mean, um Times are according to arms, according to what God wants, and uh, sometimes uh, time's up. But anyways, um, here's here's another one from um, Pastor Dana. And uh, interesting about his background is that, as you know, from the first dream that he post, uh, he mentioned that he never um, expected it to go viral, and uh, he's on you know other talk shows and stuff like that and and stuff like that but very humble guy he just wants to you know uh warn people about everything that's happening so but um i think of it also as god because um you know there's a lot of people who post dreams and and share youtube things and uh they don't go viral you know they don't they don't all of a sudden get so many hits and, and people are take interest. But for some reason, this guy, um, it's like he's uh, been put in the platform for everybody to see. 
Um, so I think that's a God thing because only God can do that. And uh, you've heard prophetic words about God's raising up unknown prophet, even though he says he's not a prophet and stuff. But God uh, also said that in the last days that he was going to raise up unknown prophets, you know. Uh, that's just my two cent of it. But anyways, um, here's here's the new one. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Definitely pray about it. Um, God's intervention regarding this whole thing. Um, I'm just going to tell you what I saw in the dreams. Monday night, August the 17th, I dreamt I saw a calendar month in November. It was bent. It was torn. It was dirty. I saw trees in the backgrounds that were leafless. But there were a few trees that still had scarce amount of leaves on them, and they had turned. The leaves that were still in those trees had turned like, like it was about to rain. Uh, the sky was a dull gray with extreme cloud cover. Um, I hardly ever see sunny skies in these dreams. That's one thing I know for sure. I saw that finger appear, and it circled November 3rd continuously uh, in, a conti in, a, in a clockwise direction. And then suddenly... It changed to counterclockwise, and then these images began to appear. I saw cities on fire, um, which was, not, was nothing new. I saw headlines that read, Trump victory challenged everywhere. It was on digital marquees, like in New York, uh, Times Square, places like that. There were protesters in the streets they were, who were weary and asleep, and they appeared dirty and dingy like they had not slept or showered in weeks. And this bell rang, and suddenly these people like come to life they woke up and they started salivating like a dog, like Pavlov's dog situation, big buckets of saliva. And it seemed to stain their shirts. And I saw people screaming and getting violent over the election results to the point that people were firing weapons just randomly into the air, into the sky. People were angry and people were mad. Um, I saw a person with a sign and it said, the obvious winner is not so obvious, like a placard, like, you know, the world's about to end, God is coming, you know, get ready, to, you know, whatever, one of those signs. He said, the obvious winner is not so obvious. And he held his head in shame. But the crowd was in, was in a frenzy of hatred. Uh, they were even hitting each other with, you know, with, with, with their signs and their banners and, and their wrath. And I saw more cities with pillars of smoke over them like, like, a, like the wildfire storms in, uh, in, in California right now. I, I saw crumbled and burned out buildings in Washington, D.C. Not monuments, but businesses and commercial real estate. Headlines declared that rebuilding would take time and trust would take even longer and government could, could not do it in a timely fashion. And that's when I saw a Treasury official who's in the Treasury Department right now wink like as almost as if he was looking at a camera on TV, big smile, open mouth, wink with right eye and held it closed and just kind of, you know, almost like a sarcastic type thing. And then I saw a Conestoga wagon, think a little house on the prairie. And Kamala Harris was driving that wagon. It was led by two mules. And Joe Biden was not sitting with Kamala Harris. Joe Biden was riding on one of the mules on the left, on the far left, so to speak. And at her side, there was a mechanical box that would trigger dynamite, like you would see in the Wile E. Coyote movies, you know, or cartoons where they push down and it blows up. Um, it was in an upright position, though, that, like the, mark, the trigger. And then the wind started blowing the, the wagon covering back and it revealed several cases of like what, you, what I would consider to be Civil War type cases of dynamite, that era, the eight, late 1800s, 1860s, 1870s. Um, and most of it was in cases, stamped dynamite, stamped dynamite. There were some loose, loose ones in a, like a, an open wicker basket, which didn't fit the timeline, but, the, but it was there. And Harris began to whip the mules and uh, with the whip, and she was hitting Joe Biden as well, but Biden had no idea he was being whipped. He was not aware of what was happening. And the mules started moving uh, and picking up speed. They were heading towards a, car, a target. And, and this is where I saw Hillary Clinton was standing behind President Trump. President Trump was on his knees, and she was wearing like a Wilma Flintstone dress. Uh, there were patches where it had not been finished yet. It wasn't seamed up. It wasn't sealed up. The collar wasn't on. There were like little strings just hanging all over the place. It was. It was almost. It wasn't finished. It wasn't. It wasn't actually ready to be worn. I guess for prime time or whatever what she was doing. Um, it was very ugly, and she had this gaudy, gaudy ring on her on her index. Buildings were collapsed. Um, 
And then I saw the church. There was a separation line and it was no middle ground. No middle ground left as the sides literally, at, at, but, but I guess in the dream, this, at this time of the dream, sides had to have been taken. There was fire on the altars in the churches around the nation and the fire moved on the heads of people who had been praying. And above the heads of many people in the church, I saw, the, I saw an actual question mark symbol above their head and they appeared confused by what they were seeing in the world in the church. And I heard a voice say, those who refuse to get ready will be wanting in the end. So brace yourself and tell others that I have warned them to brace themselves for they are about to see even more shocking things. I'm thinking of Habakkuk there, a passage that I have preached from in the last several weeks. Friday night, 20, August 21st, I simply saw the white figure appear, raised a finger to the sky, and he said, ready or not, nation, here it comes. Brace yourself. Just a rather quick and simple, you know, play on hide and seek, I guess. And last night, Monday, August 24th, I saw a calendar. It was turn of the month of November. It had shadows flickering all over it. I saw this light in the sky, a big light, very large, bright light, and then darkness. And then I began to make out like a morning it was it was morning and the the night was going away and the fog and the haze were drifting away and i saw that there were many americans and they were in like an emergency shelter um i'm not for sure but it seemed to me it was more along the gulf coast area these people were huddled together and they were shivering there were individuals laying on cots and there were suitcases all over the place and a lot of desperate looks on the faces of most everyone. Uh, there were encouragers in the crowd, though, and they all were wearing crosses. And, and they stood out emotionally uh, from everyone else because they seemed to have hope. They had smiles on their faces. Everybody else was just downtrodden in despair, angry, frustrated, confused. And they, they were checking on people. They were trying to show patience and kindness, but, but at times they were met with anger and told to go away. But the encouragers just kept doing what they were doing in spite of the manifested upset of several in the shelters. And I saw businesses that were shuttered in the bigger cities. I saw gas stations. It looked like they just people, people just walked away from them. And I saw headlines. And one read, shock and awe in the U.S. And one read, U.N. steps in to help host nation. And the nation was quiet. There wasn't war or riots or people fighting or screaming or yelling. The nation was quiet, almost like it had not awakened, had not awoken from a bad dream yet. That's what I was kind of sensing. The nation was fitful, it was suspicious, it was leery. I saw people just quietly looking around and, and, and taking everything in with their eyes. Hesitant. It's very he like they were expecting something to happen. And the sun was shining behind the clouds, but it was not out yet. And then the white figure appeared again. And he said, remain braced as this calm comes before a gathering storm that recovery will have a hard time finding. Remain braced as this calm comes before a gathering storm that recovery will have a hard time finding. I'm just sharing what I'm seeing, I know I wasn't supposed to share the one dream last week. I think maybe for the piece I had last night, I get glimpses sometime from time to time. But this one, another one of those I'm feeling. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to be obedient. That's it. Um, I'm just trying to be obedient. So you do with these what you want. Um, I have some understanding of what they mean. I've asked others to look at them and pray about them too. But uh, I believe the Lord's coming back soon. He needs the church to be ready. He's trying to wake America up. He's trying to wake the church up. And there's not much more time for us to wake up.